Welcome back. I've got an exciting one for you today. If you've been following along with Pixel Dojo, my kind of core project, it's where you can use 20, 30 plus generative AI tools to create images, videos, pretty much anything you can imagine in your mind. One of the things I launched a few days ago is called Pixel Studio. This is the brand new integrated single canvas where you can use a bunch of different tools in one place. So we're going to go ahead and check that out today. That's going to be our focus. And you can see here, just to give you a sort of a broad layout, by default, you're on the Generate Image tab. In the center, you've got your main canvas. This is where you can either upload an image from your own computer, or you could browse the My Media. This is your sort of your media gallery that's built into the site. And then over here on the right, you've got all the different settings that you can apply to the image model. You can see over here, for example, you can select the model. So you could go Flux Pro, Pro Ultra, Flux Dev, whatever you want to use to generate your images. For us, let's start from scratch. Now, I am going to select a LoRa model. And if you haven't used a LoRa before, it's a low rank adaptation model. That's the fancy term for it. But what it is, is it's a trained model that can create images of virtually anything. So you could train one to create images of yourself, of another person, of an object, of a car, of a place. It doesn't matter. You can do that with LoRa training. And there's a Flux and an SDXL LoRa trainer built right into Pixel Dojo. So we're going to go to My LoRa's. We're going to scroll down. And I've got this LoRa that I created a few days ago of the new Tesla Model Y Juniper. So we're going to go ahead and click that. You can see that it adds the token word or the trigger word. This is what is used to actually generate an image of that model. So you can see. Tesla Model Y Juniper, the LoRa is loaded here. It has automatically selected Flux Dev LoRa for the model that's going to be used to generate the images because it knows it has a LoRa attached to it. And it's added this to the prompt. Now, I'm going to expand the prompt a little bit and say, a photo of a Tesla Model Y Juniper driving through the mountains. Then you can also do some advanced settings with guidance, number of steps. You can even change and adjust the seed that's used. But for us, we're just going to go all right, let's go with a widescreen aspect ratio, and that's it. Click on Generate. And while that's going, I am going to talk about one more thing. So you can clear the prompt here, which is nice and easy. You can also enhance it. This uses a large language model in the back end to take your core prompt that you provided and then add additional detail to it, just so you can potentially get a nicer image that way. Now, in just a few seconds, the main image is going to generate, and it'll pop up here. And if you like the image, fantastic. You can continue using it. Otherwise, you can just click Generate again, and it'll just generate another image for you. Awesome. I think this image came out perfect. It's exactly what I was hoping for. Nice and dynamic. It's got the mountains, great lighting, everything else. And you can see that since an image has been generated here, you've got all these other options in the left-hand menu. You've got variation, so you can create variations of this image. You've got video, so you can convert the image to a video. And you've also got Expand. We'll talk about each one of these, and I'll show you what they do separately. But let's get started with video really quickly. So we'll click on Video, and you can see you can select the model. The image stays right here where it was. And for Model, we're going to go with Kling Standard 1.6. Describe the video animation. For the prompt, we'll just say, a car driving through the mountains. Five seconds, and we'll click Generate Video. Another really cool thing about Pixel Studio is while this is generating, you don't have to wait here. You can go back and you can generate other images. You can jump around. Doesn't matter. So in our case, we're going to generate a couple more images. Let's go with a photo of Tesla Model Y Juniper car. And we'll just change the prompt to driving by the ocean. Generate another image. Ah, there we go, much better. OK, that's more of the look I was going for. It's by the ocean. It's got the nice, again, dynamic driving, lighting, everything else. Cool. Now, you can see here, if you look at the History tab, down here below, you've got every single image that we've generated in this session. So this is really cool because you can jump down here, and you can see the seed. You can see all of the information and details about every single image. And you can just click on one of these, and it'll load it into the canvas. And it also, if you look down here, it's changing the seed. It's changing all the settings and everything else. So if we selected Flux Schnell, for example, we got rid of our LoRa, we cleared our prompt. 
Now, when we load one of these, it loads the LoRa, it loads all the settings, selects the right model, and loads our prompt back up. So if you're iterating through a bunch of images really quickly, and you go, oh man, what was my prompt that I used six images ago? Easy, you can just jump back here, grab it, and go for it. So I've made this hopefully as easy as possible to really get in here and start managing images with ease. Now, if you like some of these and you don't like others, you have a multi-select here, so you can just select all of these, you could select a couple of these, whatever you wanna do. For example, I don't like two of these images, so this first one that we generated and this kind of middle one that we generated. So I'll select those and you can just delete them. There you go, they're out of your canvas, out of here forever. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, this history saves and it persists through screen refreshes. So if you refresh the page or you go and leave and come back, this will still be here. So you can jump in right where you left off. These images are stored in my temporary file system for 24 hours. Every 24 hours, they get completely cleared out, but it's a nice way for you to have something that's persistent. So you can come back in here and just kind of get back in where you left off. And when you're done, you're going to want to take the images that you like, and you can select them, and you just click Save. That'll save them to your My Media section, which I'll show you in a second. Or you can select all of these, and you can click on Download. That'll just download them to your computer. It won't save them on my servers at all. All right, so let's check out a couple of the other tools. So the variations, for example, if you've got an image that's loaded up here, what you can do is you can just create different variations of it. Flux Schnell. This is actually using Flux Redux. So I've got Flux Redux Schnell and Flux Redux Pro. You see, here's one variation. And you'll notice what it does is it tries to keep some of the core concepts of the image, but then create sort of a wild variation of it in some way. So sometimes, especially for like images of backgrounds or scenery, things like that, you can get some really cool concepts going. Other times it goes off the rails but it all just kind of depends on what you're looking for. And I'm wondering if we do these variations enough, if it's just going to keep expanding the height of the front of this car. Let's try it again. Interesting. And it's keeping a similar look. So again, we can jump back through these. Let's take this one, for example. we we'll create a variation of it, and we'll say Flux Redux Dev. This is the higher quality model. We'll just jump in and see what that comes back with. Oh, it almost looks like a Model X with the Model Y Juniper front end. Super interesting. So it's a fun way to play around and get some variations of your image if you're just looking for something a little bit out there. The other tool built in here is Expand. So you can take your existing image, this one, and we'll say a photo of a Tesla driving through the mountains. We'll actually just say car. We'll get rid of the trigger word there. And expand, we'll go expand out one and a half X, and we'll just click on expand. This uses Flux Pro Fill in the background, and what it's gonna do is it's going to outpaint or expand the image on the outsides of the image. And you can see that came out awesome. It looks like it zoomed out quite a bit there, and we can compare the original with this new zoomed in version. Now, a couple other things to note this unified canvas allows you to drag and drop your images, move them around, you can reposition them, you can even scale them up and down. So if you wanted to get into some real details and just make sure the image looks exactly how you'd like it, you can easily do that with these tools. Now, the other thing is you can load up from My Media. This is your own gallery that's built in to Pixel Dojo. And you can see it over here on the left-hand side. You can go ahead and load up My Media in a new tab. And the My Media section is where all of your previously generated images that you've saved get stored. You can see you've got a folder system, so you can create folders for all of your Tesla vehicles or any LoRa's that you've got, for example. And what you can do is you can come in here and manage these. You can make them public or private. You can download them and even click to enhance and check out the details of each one. If you want to copy a prompt or check out a seed, see what LoRa's you use for it, all of that is available in your My Media section. So this is for you to just keep track of everything you've done on Pixel Dojo in the past. And the cool thing is you can load those up right here in the My Media tab. 
so that you can jump in and you can say, oh, okay, well, I want to create a variation of this image for my My Media section. Go over to Variations and click on it, and here you're off and running. That actually came out really cool. It took sort of this cartoonish image that I had and turned it into a fairly realistic, very high quality image. Oh, and it looks like our video is done generating. This is the video that we processed in the background. It's been running in the background this entire time being generated. And here it is. Let's check it out. This is our Tesla Model Y driving through the mountains. So now we've got our videos and our images and everything else saved right here in the history, as you can see. So you can click on one of these. It'll pull up the image. Here's this one. And here's even our video. So you can see it doesn't matter what type of media you generate with Pixel Studio. It'll load up right here nice and easy. And it even created our other variation while we were watching the video. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and take these and I will save them to my media. I'll put those in my public gallery so you all can check them out. This is Pixel Studio. I've got a lot more really cool options coming to this, including LoRa based in painting, which you can use today separately, but I want to build it directly into Pixel Studio. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, anything else down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.